Well, the thing about my parents is that they've changed a lot over the years. They weren't exactly national voters. That may, well, my dad probably was, but more like kind of swing voters. And they managed to raise three communist kids. So <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but. <laughs> you just told the entire thing of Aotearoa that you're a communist. Ah. Uh. You don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get to tell me shit. Got the mic set up now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, you know. Before we uh, let all the party secrets slip. It's not my normal job, just now. Yeah, yeah. Are you interested in leaving behind a safe and sustainable planet for the next generation, yeah. you know? Not raising our children in a biohazard, perhaps. <laughs> and we recognise that climate justice is intertwined with intersectionality. Like, we have to think about tertiary justice, feminist justice, queer justice. It's all, like, interconnected, so it's essential. Yeah, exactly. The Wi-Fi is cut the out. Wi -Fi's so the Wi-Fi is so shit, yeah. QR code. Hello. When I'm trying to explain what the Green Party is really about to people, it's about how our green values inform our approach to improving people's daily lives, seeing how we can imagine a world that is fairer, more equitable, and trying to fight the structural inequalities of the system. Essentially, in dismantling all hierarchies, that maintain systems of oppression. We don't compromise on our beliefs, we don't dilute our policies. We get what's at stake and we do what's necessary. Yep. Can you um, chat to this group of people? And yeah, awesome. Explain it? Yep, yep. We're unionizing, the leftists are unionizing. The current Labour government, right, has had the biggest majority in MMP history, but has done the least with it. <laughs> I actually have like three copies of this. That's a communist manifesto. Oh, I thought it was the Bible, and I was like, what is the Bible? Oh, yeah, it's the Bible, Carmen. Thank you so much for signing up. Our new Greens co-leader. <laughs> He's very good. <laughs> we love him. He's my son. He's our son. Our child. <laughs> Horrific. <laughs> This is a shoes of household, <laughs> Asian household rules. Exactly. Welcome to our humble Auckland abode. This is... The living room. This is what yeah. $520 gets you in Auckland City. Mm. We are yet to completely tidy up this place. Yeah, that it's we the do. big pile yeah. of random stuff. We're still mm. working out a vibe. Hmm, hmm. And when did you two meet each other? Oh, on Zoom. <laughs> we met on Zoom. It was, it was love at first sight. Like, wow. I, I, saw, I saw the pixels and I was like, wow. Pixelated Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> that guy has be, has a very extensive beret collection. He's a nerd. Yeah, he's definitely a nerd. What draws together, not just in terms of politics, but why we live and love together is because we just fundamentally share these same values of wanting to see structural change, justice, uh, reparations for past wrongs, and I think that kind of directs <laughs> how we live, <laughs> overtakes most of our life. I'm just thinking back to a discourse on Twitter a few years ago about like, would you date someone with a different political alignment than you? And if I see myself with a young nat or a young at, like I physically cannot stand <laughs> that. It's, ugh. So none of this makes any sense in my brain. We're gonna be honest. Ryan is sick. He has a lung infection and he was at the hospital on Thursday. Oh, so okay. the man is having um, a sick day at home. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not the best. He's eating a lot of antibiotics, drinking a lot of fluids. He will be all right. Um, he's a strong boy. Cool. So I'm just not J. Why does it go B C D E? No, I'm not, not too okay. sure about that one actually. Okay. Can we just go in? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Lily's uh, going in. It's all on you. G'day. Kira. How you going? Are you Peter by any chance? No, no, I'm Ross. Ross, yep. 
Can I just ask what sort of issues are you passionate about? Um, I would say obviously cost of living. Probably. Cost of living? Yeah, you're not the Pollution. first person to say that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And sorry if this is invasive, but what party do you usually need to vote for? Uh, I did National Net. Yeah, last, National Net. Right? So yeah, absolutely. I think um, probably go down National route again. Yeah. Um, but I think farming seems to be copping a lot of stick at the moment. Obviously, sustainability is key, but um, you know, primary industry has always helped. Yeah, absolutely. Get us out of the shit. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for having this chat with us. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Not where I thought that was going. Hey, but everyone's entitled to their own political opinions as they are. So he was a real reasonable person. We're stuck. I'm sorry, guys. We had to live here. <laughs> We're stuck. I'm currently working on like a candidate safety plan. Ooh. Which is a little bit like death threats and stalking. Ah, uh, um, that also, like, type of safety. Yeah. It's always hard receiving your first death threat. Not a vibe. No. Not a vibe at all. My family are quite socially conservative. I have an aunt who's very invested in ranting about rates in the family group chat. Yeah. She was really angry at me because I was advocating for um, raising a minimum wage, mm -hmm. ensuring that living wage is a necessity. And she was like, how dare you think about the small business owners? After that argument, we just went on speaking terms, and it's just so bizarre to me because this is something that is so personal. I was working as a barista, mm -hmm. as a front of house, and I was receiving pennies. I was barely making ends meet. And it's hard when that personal is political, right? Like, we're not just talking about this stuff. We are the ones on the minimum wage jobs. We are the ones whose rights are getting attacked in the media or by uh, activists who come over from the UK and try to start hate and, you know, have rallies against our mere oh, existence. Yeah, yeah. Have a look at all the signs. We got a lot done. Trans rights, human rights. Oh, I love this one. Hot babes for trans rights. <laughs> Right now, I'm feeling slightly anxious because I think, despite attending protests since I was 13, this is one of the most confrontational ones. I have never been face to face with someone with such extreme ideologies. We're here today to be protesting uh, the arrival of Posey Parker on our shores. She is a right wing figurehead who is openly anti trans and homophobic and also xenophobic. She's also neo-Nazi adjacent, as we've seen in Australia, where neo-Nazis literally showed up doing sig hails during the protest. We are also organising a walking bus alongside our queer allies. And our plan for today is ensuring everyone feels safe and they feel supported in a larger group. Because here is power in numbers. I want this plan so badly. You know what was great? Someone was Oh, okay. A bunch of water. You want the expensive waters. Only the best. Who are you, a bourgeoisie? <laughs> <laughs> what we're probably going to do is set up like a centralized gathering area in the green zone. We have one more sign. Any takers? Any takers? I would love a sign. Yeah, okay, awesome. Over. We're joining um, the Greens candidates who are also coming. So we'll form a bigger group and ensuring that we have the numbers. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> we had a sign painting session yesterday. I love the like artistic integrity.
as long as you're safe and you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I can't believe that's yeah. so hard. Yeah. I am feeling so angry, but also so scared. They were physically abusive. They pushed her and it was... She got clipped by an entire bike. Exactly. Right in the stomach. And currently we are speaking to the police just to... I'm going to go yeah, with her. No, just to sort this out. But it's quite an awful situation. I feel like fleeing home to safety. But I know that being out here, being present on the ground is so necessary for our friends Fano and ensuring that they're not fighting this fight alone. <laughs> It's not for me having a chunk of beer and debate and yelling at David Seymour. It's personal. It affects how I live. It just drains the life force out of me because I am constantly reminded that I am still fighting for my rights. You lost your beret? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it, um... So I think someone knocked it off my head and I didn't see it after that and I dropped my phone, oh. found my phone, I didn't find the beret. <laughs> no, it's all right. Mm. I'm sure I'll find another one somewhere.